So these notes, maybe this is what we should have done uh, right before, right after we came back, but that's fine. We're doing it now. Uh, right before we start unit six, uh, we didn't have 100% mastery. We kept getting these wrong, so we're going over this one more time. I put some boxes, so not that it you know changes anything. They're similar to the previous notes, but hopefully this time we can uh, finally master it once and for all. 100% mastery. Uh, on F, F prime, F double prime. So on what, like on our exam? No, well, also on that, general? but in general, yeah. Like, we didn't, we didn't beat it up. We didn't eat. We didn't cook. No, we cooked, but we didn't necessarily eat what we cooked. All right. So here we go. The graph of the function G of X is pictured to the right. All right, it's been awesome. Focus, focus, miss. So this is G of X right here. Core, cool not core. Cool? Identify the following characteristics about the graph of the derivative g prime of x. Give a reason for your answer. All right, so it says the intervals where g prime is less than zero. Well, g prime is less than zero wherever this graph right here decreases. So I decrease from negative four to negative two, and then I decrease from one to infinity. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna write g prime is less than zero, on the interval, parentheses, actually, yeah, intervals, bracket, negative 4, comma, all the way to negative 2, close bracket, and uh, bracket 1, comma, all the way to infinity, parentheses, since g of x is decreasing on these specific intervals. Simple enough, guys, or no? Yep. Perfect. All right, let's continue. Give the intervals where G prime is positive. G prime is positive. Well, you know what? I just noticed. Mm, okay. This says G prime is negative. And right at negative 4, you are not. So put parentheses on this and, and this. You are decreasing. You are decreasing on negative 4 to negative 2. Decreasing. You are decreasing on the bracket negative 4 to negative 2. But G prime is not negative right at negative 4 and right at negative 2. G prime is 0 at those two values. Right? Okay. But by the definition of what's decreasing and what's increasing, you increase on an interval, you decrease on an interval, so on a closed interval. So the pixel immediately to the to the right of negative four is smaller pixel than the pixel right at negative four. So not one is it also a parenthesis or uh, and yeah, yeah. It should be a parenthesis. Cause because uh, it says where G prime is less than zero, right? Mm -hmm. So good catch. All right. G prime is greater than zero on negative infinity. All the way to negative 4, parenthesis, and from negative 2 all the way to 1, since g of x is increasing on, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this, guys, just so I can uh, put the brackets on it, negative 4 and negative 2, comma, 1 bracket. So there it is. I guess I should have also written G prime is positive, right? G prime is positive on, so there it is. G prime is positive on that and that, since G of X is increasing on negative infinity to negative 4 and negative 2 to 1, and those are brackets. Cool or not cool? And then finally, the last one here, where is G prime equal to 0? G prime equals 0 at, at X equals... Negative 4 and x equals negative 2 and, well, it's one more, x equals 1. x equals negative 4, negative 2, and 1. Cool or not cool? cool. So in conclusion, here's all you got to know about this. If g prime is positive, that means g is increasing. If g prime is negative, that means g is decreasing. 
And I think we have that on lock. So I don't think there's any issues on that. Are we good? OK. So now, oh, I didn't label it. Dang it. Next time, I'll label it. This graph is h prime. So label that graph as h prime. Identify the following characteristics about the function h of x as given, and give a reason for your responses. So I want to know where h is increasing. This is h prime. So h is increasing wherever h prime is positive, and I am positive all in this region right there. Do you guys see that? Yeah. So I'm going to write, I guess I'll put the intervals here. Uh, intervals where I'm increasing, I'm increasing, yeah, yeah, I'm going to write h of x is increasing on negative 2 to negative, oh no, negative 2 to 1 and 3 to infinity. And then the reason, I'm going to put the reason here in this box over here, h of x is increasing because because h prime of x is positive on parentheses negative 2 comma to 1 comma and comma 3 comma to infinity period and there it is how do we feel yay perfect i'm going to change my color to sky blue and I'm going to go really slow. Uh, where um, uh, The intervals where h of x is decreasing. Well, I'm decreasing there. So from negative infinity, so I'm going to write h of x is decreasing on negative infinity all the way to negative 2. And from, from what? 1 to 3. 1 to 3 with a bracket. If you want to put parentheses on everything, I guess that's okay. But you, you increase and decrease on an interval, guys. And then I'm going to put right, y right here. h of x is decreasing because h prime of x is negative on parentheses, negative infinity, comma, to negative 2, parentheses, and parentheses, 1, comma, 3, parentheses, period. Cool or not cool? cool? Bless you, bless you, bless you. Oh, bless you once, sorry. All right. No questions yet, guys? Okay. The value of x for h of x has a relative max. I have a max where? Just at 1. Why do I have a max at 1? What changes? H prime. So that's what we're going to write. Max. Well, h of x has max. So let's write h of x has max at x equals 1 since h prime of x changes from what to what? From positive to negative at x equals 1. And I know it sounds funny to repeat x equals 1 again, but say it again. So h of x has max h of x has max at x equals 1 since h prime of x changes from positive to negative at x equals 1. I probably should have put more room there. My bad, guys. I'll fix it next year. I know next year won't matter, but I'll fix it next year. These are fresh notes. I just had these up uh, Sunday night at like 2 in the morning. Uh, bless you. Bless you. 2 a.m. today. Yeah, 2 a.m. today. So if, if you go and look for this video on my YouTube channel, you won't find it because it is brand new. The value of x where h of x has a relative minimum. Well, there's actually two of them, I believe. Yeah, there's two. Why? Perfect. I have two minimums, guys. Let me change the color. I'm going to write x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. And I'm going to write that. So here it is. I'm going to write h of x has min at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3 since h prime of x changes.
from negative to positive at those specific x values. At those specific x values. I was going to say them again, but I just wanted to write something different. How do we feel? Nothing crazy, right? All right. And then I bring, look, I, I brought a ladder, a ladder, I was like scaffolded here. So I tell you that h of negative 1 equals half, and I, want, and I want to know what is the equation of the tangent line of h of x at x equals negative 1. For a tangent line, I need two things, what and what. Point and slope. Do I have a point? Yes, this is a point. The point is negative 1 comma half. That's your point. Do I have a slope? Yes. yes, this is your slope, negative 1, 5. It's, this is my h prime graph, guys. So I'm going to come back, and I'm going to write h minus 1 half equals, and then I put, uh, what's my slope again? 5 x plus 1. If you're scared, leave it alone. This is your tangent line. <laughs> How do we feel? Okay, I know, I know, I know. We're tired. Don't worry. The, today's lesson is going to be short. All right. Then look what I wrote here, and I hope this makes sense to you guys. So we know the deal between the relationship between f prime and f. We know that. You guys just proved it to me. So I need everyone to focus, guys. Everyone to focus here. Let's chat about the second derivative. Since the second derivative is the first derivative of f prime, the, the first derivative of f prime is f prime prime. Does that make sense? Okay then the same relationships exist between f and f prime must exist between f prime and f prime prime. I know, I know. Tongue twister. What does it mean? Let's first do the relationship between f and f prime. You told me if f prime is positive, this means that f is what? Increasing. Is increasing. That's what you told me. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. So that means, okay, so here it is. If f prime prime is positive, Tell me what that means in terms of f prime. f prime is increasing. Good job, guys. That's what it means. Yay or nay? Yay. And do I talk about concavity just yet? Okay. If f prime is increasing, all right. Um, dang, I knew I should. I messed up something on the notes here. Okay. Here's f. This is what it means for f prime to be increasing, guys. I want you to notice. I know. Don't worry. Notice this f prime is like, I don't know, negative 8. I'm going to say f prime equals negative 8. Look at this one. That's like f prime equals negative 4. Let me make sure that looks like a prime and not a... Uh, that's fine. This one here is like f prime equals 0. That one there is like f prime equals 4. This one here is like f prime equals 8. I want you to notice... My f prime, negative 8, negative 4, 0, 4, 8, is f prime increasing. Because f prime is increasing, what is the concavity of f? Concave up. So if f prime is increasing, you have concave up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that means, so what does also this mean in terms of f? Uh, in terms of f, f is concave up. Cool or not cool? Cool. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with f prime uh, being negative now. Uh, or f, okay, so if f prime is negative, of course, that means that f is decreasing. Oh, man, maybe I shouldn't have told you guys that. You guys know that, though, right? Yeah. Okay, if f prime prime, oh, sorry. If f prime prime is negative, that means that f, is, f prime is decreasing. Which means that f prime prime, oh yeah, sorry, which means that f is concave down. No, you're good, you're good, I got you. It's the same thing, guys. Cool or not cool? Okay, so then we put the relationship here. So, well, I guess I did put it in there, it just wasn't, okay, here we go. If f prime prime is, and I put here, if f prime prime is positive, what did that tell me about f? F is concave up. Write that down. F is concave up. What did it tell me about F prime? 
F prime is increasing. F prime is increasing. Does organizing your data in a table like this help? Yep. Okay. If F prime prime is negative, this, oh, by the way, this is how you say positive, and this is how you say negative. If F prime prime is negative, then what? tell me about F. F is concave down. Tell me about F prime. F prime is decreasing. All right, you're gonna. I think you're gonna love this. I hope. If f prime prime changes from positive to negative, tell me about f. <laughs> I, I I'm changing from concave up to concave oh, down, so it's a point of inflection. F has a point of inflection. All right, tell me about F prime. Has a max. F prime has a max. So if F prime has a max, that means F has a point of inflection. So that was that delta math that we were doing a long time ago. Remember that? All right. So maybe we should have done this first, but I didn't think about it until, I mean, I thought about it yesterday, that time, but we didn't put it together like this until now. Changes from negative to positive. That's F, sorry. If F prime prime changes from negative to positive, then F again has a point of inflection. What about F prime? F prime has a min. Cool or not cool, guys? All right. That's it. That's the review. So here's what we have so far. I haven't added any new assignments. Unit one progress check is due this Friday. It's a completion grade. Optimization, some of you already attempted. Thank you guys. I, it, was, it, it was initially due Friday, uh, but I decided to make it due Sunday uh, only to help you guys out. Guy, but guys, make sure that I, I'm not around in the weekend, guys. So, well, I am, I guess, if you can always text me. But I'm here right now, guys, so please ask me questions now. Uh, a lot of you have already turned in your optimization handout. I have it graded. Uh, the mo uh, almost everyone, actually, no one has. Uh, yeah, no one got a hundred on it. Everyone got ninety-five because on the very first question, it asked for the dimensions, and no one gave me the dimensions. He just told me x equals two, or x equals whatever. You didn't give me the dimensions of the page. You told me x equals two, y equals eight. Eight times two, sixteen. But you gave me the area, the correct area of 32. So it's four, eight by four. X equals two. Remember, but the remember what our model was. It was two x times y, length times width. The the length was two x. So if my x is two, my length is four. You know what I mean? And then the circuit is due today, guys. So uh, finish the circuit. If you weren't here Friday, then you have an extension. And that's it. So let's take care of business.